So last month I called the Insta360 ONE X a magical camera that everyone should have in their kit bag, and I stand by that recommendation. But this month I've been taking a look at their newest model, the Insta360 EVO, which does this kind of hybrid transforming thing where it changes from a 360 degree camera to a 180 degree stereoscopic camera, perfect for virtual reality. In fact, I'd go so far as to say this is the best VR camera for consumers available on the market today. I'm James Bruce, you're watching MakeUseOf.com Reviews, and join me as I take a closer look at the Insta360 Evo. So before we go on, this review was almost entirely recorded on the Insta360 Evo to give you the best idea of the footage. The only difference is that the audio is being recorded and then mixed in post-edit by a external recorder. This is a sample of how the audio sounds directly from the camera itself. However, there is no audio import, so if you do want better quality audio, you will need to use an external recorder like I am. Also, I would strongly suggest that you watch this in VR, either through your phone, if you have a little VR thing you can slot it into, just click the little VR button in the corner. Otherwise, if you're watching this just on YouTube on a flat screen, you can sort of drag it around a bit and have a look around the viewpoint. So also in our test package was this hollow frame, which clips onto your phone and allows you to watch 3D content without any additional glasses or headsets, just looking at the screen itself and I'll talk about that later in this review. So onto the hardware. The device itself is minuscule, roughly a cube shape measuring five centimeters in each direction and weighing around 115 grams. Unlike the One X, there is no removable battery, so you get what you're given, and that's about 45 minutes to an hour of continuous shooting. You can extend that by plugging it into a battery, and of course, if you're shooting in VR, then it doesn't really matter. No one can see what's behind the camera, since it's only a 180 degree field of view, so you can easily hide a battery pack behind there. Controls on the Evo are very sparse. There's only two buttons and two LEDs to display everything that you need to know. One of the buttons is a mode button to switch between video or photos, and the other is a shutter and power button. If you hold it down, it will turn the unit on or off. Other than that, you get an LED for photo or for video mode, and those LEDs will flash to indicate that it's recording. There's also two LEDs on the front of the device, which also flash to indicate it's currently recording. The only thing I really don't like about the design are the really flimsy plastic locks that are designed to keep it in place when it's either folded up or folded outwards for use as a VR camera. It's definitely something that could be improved upon, and I'm sure there are actually better ways of mechanically locking something into place without having a little bit of plastic that pulls out. Also included in the package is a little mini tripod that folds flat like that, and if you purchase direct from Insta360, you're also gonna get a selfie stick. Now, unlike the One X, this camera cannot do bullet time mode even when it's folded up as a 360 camera. So one pretty amazing feature of the Insta360 Evo compared to competitors' VR 180 cameras is that the Evo has their patented flow state stabilization technology, meaning that you're gonna get ultra smooth video even when moving around. Now, generally speaking with VR, you don't want to move the camera around. It may cause nausea in some people who are new to VR. For the next 30 seconds or so, I'm gonna show you some moving footage. So if you are unused to VR, you are watching this in VR, then I'd suggest just perhaps closing your eyes for the next 30 seconds while I show this to you. So this motion mismatch that causes sickness is something most VR users get used to after a while, and it varies a lot from person to person. But it is something to bear in mind if you're targeting people with your movies that have never used VR before, it might be best just to keep a static angle and observe the scene rather than trying to move through it. Also, try to avoid having objects super close to the camera, which can feel a bit like you're seeing double, and like all VR video, the sweet spot is precisely in the center. If you attempt to look around the edges of the scene, you may get distortion and mismatched or awkward stereo effects. Okay, you can open your eyes again. No more motion with the camera, I promise. So the VR video is shot at 5.7K, and I've got to say, I think it looks pretty incredible. It's finally at the point where I think consumers can make decent looking VR videos at home without paying out for a massively expensive camera. At $400 or thereabouts, it's really quite affordable. 
The only thing that puts me off making VR videos more at the moment is the workflow. It is involving a lot of faffing around. After getting the footage off of the camera itself, you'll need to run it through the desktop software in order to get it out at the full 5.7K resolution. If you use the app on the phone, you're limited to 4K. Edit it in Final Cut, output, change it from 360 to 180 stereoscopic, and then inject the metadata before uploading it to YouTube. It's a lot of effort and there's a lot of processing required of very large files. I ended up at about one gigabyte per minute recorded. For short videos, of course, you can use the app on the phone and you'll be limited to 4K, but it still looks really good. And that's still one of the highest resolution VR cameras you're gonna find in the consumer market. So one absolutely incredible feature is the ability to preview what you're recording live on the Oculus Go or Vive Focus. Simply open up the Insta360 app, hit the camera icon having connected to the Wi-Fi, and you'll see a live preview of what you're recording. Whoa, that's me. That's trippy. Now, of course, there's a little bit of a delay and this is kind of messing with my mind trying to watch and record at the same time. But still, it's a pretty incredible feature and really lets you get a feel for what you're recording before you hit record. So as I mentioned, it is a hybrid design camera, meaning that not only do you get the ability to record stereoscopic 180, you can also fold the lenses back inwards and record in 360 as you could on the One X. And while you do get most of the basic features that the One X offered, that is the ability to point the camera where you want after recording, you don't get some of the more advanced features like bullet time or live streaming. So if live streaming or bullet time mode was important to you, then I would look at the One X instead. Also, because the lenses are further apart when it's in 360 mode, the stitching between the two hemispherical parts of the video on is not gonna be quite as good as it was on the One X. You will notice some more errors where it's been stitched. Finally, I wanted to talk briefly about the Hollow Frame, an accessory Insta360 offer that gives you a simple way to view your 180 VR movies on your phone without using special glasses or a VR holder thing. It's a pretty clever design. In normal use, you just keep it on the back of your phone, just like a gel case. And when you want to watch something, you just flip it off and put it on the front. Unfortunately, there is some extra processing required to watch a video like this. So it's not instant the first time you play a video in that mode. And even once processed, it can be a bit finicky since it uses the phone's camera to watch your eyes and then recalculates the 3D effect. It is clever, no doubt, and it does work. But personally, I didn't find the 3D effect to be all that pronounced and probably not worth the effort of having to wait for a video to be processed first. In fact, also in the Evo package is a very basic set of lenses. It just clips onto your phone and there's no additional processing required to watch like that. While the quality still isn't as good as watching in VR, I did feel it was better than using the hollow frame. So nice gimmick, but ultimately, I wouldn't recommend you grab the hollow frame too, just especially so. If it's in your package, then great, take it for free by all means, but I wouldn't go out of your way to get one. So should you buy the Insta360 camera? Well, yet again, I think Insta360 have done the impossible. They've made shooting for VR financially viable for anyone really, and with a good enough resolution that it actually makes compelling content. And they've done all of that in an incredibly lightweight, tiny package that transforms back to a 360 magical camera when you want it to. Yes, it's not perfect. The non-removable battery, the little plastic latches that lock it in place. However, those design flaws are forgivable and certainly not deal breakers. I still think this is the best consumer grade 3D VR camera that anyone can buy and make 3D VR movies with. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this review and that the sample footage I've included, the whole review even, has helped you to make an informed purchasing decision. If it has, please hit like and consider subscribing. We do two reviews and giveaways every single week, as well as the occasional tips, tricks, and technology tutorials from all of us at makeuseof.com. Thanks for watching and until next time. All right, if you're still here, it means you know we have an Insta360 Evo to give away to one lucky viewer. Just head on over to the link in the description or go to makeuseof.com slash giveaways where we list all of our latest giveaways 
and into the entry widget, you'll want to type the code stereoscopic for some bonus entries. Competition closes in about three weeks and the winners will be notified by email. Thanks for watching, good luck, and until next time.